Hello, I'm Ilian St. Hilaire and in this video we're going to take a look at 12 tips and tricks that you may not know about Mesh Central. The Mesh Central user interface has a lot of hidden features and things that you may not have noticed before. So I'm just going to show off 10 or actually 12 different tricks that uh, may be of use. So we'll start with my trusty Mesh Central server. I have it running here. And of course, I have the UI there. So the first thing is when you go and do a remote desktop session like this, you may not have noticed that there's a full screen button and you can click that and it goes full browser. So you may have noticed that, but if you hold the mouse button on the button on the full screen, you'll notice that it says if you hold shift, then it goes to browser full screen. So if you hold shift and hit that, it will go to the full screen of the entire browser. And on the bottom here, there's going to be an escape key. And the reason, just below, below my picture, and the reason is that when you hit escape, the browser will then leave full screen. So the escape key won't work. And so in order to substitute for the missing escape key, uh, there's an additional one just right there. Anyway, so that's trick number one, the shift full screen button. The other trick is that you may have noticed there's a bunch of custom keys here. For example, I can click on Windows, say send, and that will send the Windows key to the remote side. Now, that's great, but what if I want to customize this and you know add my own combination? Well, you right click on that and you say customize, and you'll be able to say, for example, I want it to shift, um, uh, shift home, for example, and I say add, and then the shift home key will be added. I can also rearrange the order of the keys with these little arrows, and I can delete any of the keys I want. So I hit the garbage can, and it will remove it. So that's how to customize these keys there. That's number two. Number three, a third um, trick, is the right click on the connect of the desktop. So by default, if you connect here, you'll get, uh, if you're full administrator on your server, you will get uh, just a normal remote desktop session. But let's suppose I want to uh, add a privacy bar or I want to ask the user for permission before I remote to the computer. I can right click and say ask for consent with the privacy bar, ask for consent, no privacy bar, or just a privacy bar. So if I click with privacy bar, you'll see that the bar is on top right there. If I disconnect, and I say ask for consent and privacy bar, then it says, you know, waiting for consent. And if I switch over to my, uh, to my split screen here, you'll see on the remote system, there is the consent. I can say no, and then you'll see denied right there. Or I can right click and say ask again, and this time I'll say yes, and you'll see the screen um, remoted. So the, the third trick is, that we have uh, right click on the connect button for remote desktop. The fourth trick I want to show is that you can right click on the disconnect button and say disconnect and lock or just a regular disconnect. So actually what you, you can do here is go into settings and say I want to uh, lock the remote device when I disconnect from remote desktop. So you can do that. And so when you hit disconnect, the remote device will, will um, auto lock. So actually there it goes, there it locked. But I'm going to reconnect again. I'm going to go ahead and log in once more. Okay, so now I'm, I'm logged in again. And my, management's, my management screen is on the top left here. And the remote computer is on the right. So I'm going to right click. Uh, so I can go in settings and remove the lock on disconnect. But regardless of the setting I use, if I right click and I say just disconnect, it disconnects normally. And then if I say disconnect and lock, then boom, it also locks. So that is trick number four. Trick number five is the same right click but on the terminal button. So I'm going to, let's go, go back here. So I can right click on the terminal button and I have all these options. So if you normally, you click on um, 
the terminal button and you say connect, you get the command prompt as administrator. So it will say administrator here and I can put the RR and there we go. And I'm running as the agent, so as system. But if I disconnect and right click, I can say, for example, I want a user shell or admin PowerShell. So I can do an admin PowerShell right there and then LS will work. Or I can do a user PowerShell. In that case, I'm logged in as the currently logged in user. And so uh, I get the PowerShell uh, like that. So <clears throat> let's see, that's trick number five. Right click on the terminal connect button. Aha, trick number six is right click on the devices. So if you're in the device view here or on the list view, if you right click on the device, you get all these additional fun options. So for example, I can right click and say desktop and it will not only go to the desktop, it will also auto connect to that device's desktop. So I'm going to go back and log into this one because I auto locked out. But let's try that again. I can right click, say desktop, boom, I'm right in the desktop in a, basically right click and like in two clicks, I'm connected to the desktop. I don't have to click the connect button in that case. Really cool trick. So that's number six. Number seven, if you right click on the device, there's something called toggle star and that will put a little star here and you can do that for multiple devices. It's like three of them. And then what you can do is you can filter on starred and boom, you only see the devices you start. This is great if you're working on a few devices right now and you want to quickly uh, not have to view all the devices, just the ones you're working on. And then you, of course, you can right click and toggle start to remove it. And then once you refilter, it, will, it won't be there. Now, another trick related to this with the stars is that in the filter box, if you just write a star, it will also filter by star. So for example, you can say online and then you've, you say star and then only the devices that are online and have a star will show up. And then you backspace and you see that. Uh, by the way, you can also hit escape here and I will clear the, the filter list. So that's another fun trick. So that is trick number seven. Um, shift click a device, that's uh, trick number eight. So if you're on a device, you can hold shift and click on the device and it will open that device in a different tab. So if, you, if you're interested in um, not having the left tab here, you, you know, and you want to focus only on one device inside that tab, you just right click on the device and uh, hold shift and then click on the device and then you'll get the extra tab uh, for that device uh, separately. Now, this is great if you're working on multiple devices uh, simultaneously. So if I, Shift click on this one, shift click on this one, and then I can go to desktop and connect to these two devices separately. Oh, I connected to myself. Wonderful. Really good. Um, now, another thing I can do is I can right click, sh hold shift, and say desktop, and then it will come right back to, right to the desktop here, and I can connect. So that is the shift and click on a device. Now, trick number nine, I want to go to this little diamond on the upper right. Maybe people have not noticed, but this allows you to change how you view the website. So if you want to view the website with no left bar, just a top bar, which is kind of more compact, or if you want to have it uh, fixed width. So here you kind of lose some space, but you have the website in kind of the old format kind of, you know, so you can select that and you can go to the diamond and pick what you prefer. Also, the little diamond allow you to toggle the foot, the footer. So the footer is not that interesting. It has some information in terms of privacy and stuff. But if you want to, you know, get that space back, you just toggle the footer out and you get that. Um, you also have night mode and you can select to select uh, browser default, light or dark. If I say dark, there you go, I'm done dark mode. I can go back to light or I can go back to browser default. So whatever the, the browser OS settings are that will, that will you be used. And then personal notes, I can put some personal notes here so I can cut and paste that. And when I come back, I can click and say and take a look at my notes. So that's useful for just keeping notes in general. So that is the uh, 
Number nine. Oh, speaking of personal notes, one of not only do you have the personal notes here, but you also have notes for each device. So I can click on the device, type some notes here, cut and paste some commands, there you go, and then, and then come back anytime I want. And these notes are per device, not per user device. So if you're a different user and you click on notes, you will see the same notes for that device. So for example, if you, um, if you run in a problem about this uh, computer, you can click notes, type in uh, something, and then when other uh, you know, technicians or some come in and connect to that device, they can read the same notes that you just put in. So that's good. And then also if you go on device on users and you click on a user and uh, you will notice that there's also notes per user. So if you're an administrator and you're managing a lot of different users and you want to keep tab of different personal notes about, uh, about those uh, uh, users, you can do that there. And uh, of course, they're, they're per user, but if you're another user administrator, you will see those notes too. Okay, so that's uh, the notes. Now, number 11, uh, right-click on the group name. That's right. So sometimes you have a bunch of computers. Here, I'll say all. So in different device groups. And I want to select all the computers from one device group. And so I can click Select All, and this selects all the computers. But you can right-click on the device group and say Select All or Select None, and it will just select all the computers in that group. So I can do that for two groups or select none, select none, all, none, and that's it. So very often what you do is you select all for a group, then you take, you go and you say group action and make an action like uh, run a command or whatever you need. So that is selecting a group like that. Then let's see, the last one is device group features. Aha, yes. So you click on a device and one um, fun thing, oh, if you click on the device group, there's uh, features here, and that's often overlooked. That allows you to do things like, for example, you want to record all sessions for uh, remote uh, sessions that occur on any device of that group. And uh, you can also say, you know, in, inside that group, if a device disconnects, automatically remove from the group. So for example, if you're helping a bunch of people, but you don't want to keep those offline computers you know, visible, you only want that group to show the computers when they're online, then you can click on that device group and say, I want to remove computers on disconnect. You can also sync the device name. That is because if you click on a computer, uh, the, the OS name is something like sometimes desktop and some hex value like this. And so you can click on this and change it to whatever you know, your name is. But if you go in the device group and say uh, synchronize, then, it will, then all the device group names will always match the names of the remote computer. And then another thing that's super nice uh, that was added recently, automatically remove inactive devices. This is cool because if after 30 days a device never showed up, you want to automatically remove it and so that it doesn't pollute your list. Okay, so that was 12 tricks uh, from Mesh Central that hopefully you did not know and now you do. Thank you very much. Have a great day.